Hi, I'm Richard Rains. Welcome to the next edition of uh, Physics 6 Lab. Today we're going to be doing the equilibrium of a rigid body. Hopefully you have this printed out so you can write your data, data down on this sheet. And the general idea of today's lab is that we're going to take a meter stick and hang some various masses on it so it balances one way or the other. We're going to calculate the torques of those and use that information for various things. Mainly to prove that the some of the torques on an equilibrium situation equals zero. So let's just begin by uh, following the instructions here. It says, uh, part one, procedure one, find the weight of the meter stick. So I'm just going to put the meter stick on the balance. And we're going to measure its, actually it's the mass that we're measuring. Looks like it's going to be 70, 70 something. I'm looking at the little bar going up and down here. By the way, I'm doing this by myself today. We lost our cameraman, so things might be a little bit uh, rough on the edges, but we'll make do. It looks like 75.55, 75.55. Mass of the meter stick, 75.55. I'm going to round that off to 75.6 grams plus or minus 0 0.1 grams. And we can write that number on our data page where it says weight of the meter stick, actually the mass, 75.6 grams plus or minus 0 0.1 grams. So let me show you what that looks like. Right here on your data page, 75.6 plus or minus 0 0.1 grams. Okay, what we're going to do with this meter stick, we have a balancing clamp here where we can slide the meter stick into it, like so. And we have a little fulcum sy system here you can see these two little bars are notched on the top, so we can just lay this on there like that, and it makes a nice little balancing point, or what we call a fulcrum. So uh, that is going to be used together with some sliding clamps. The sliding clamps will be used to hang our various masses on to create a torque on the meter stick. So the next instruction is to weigh the two meter stick clamps together and compute their average weight. Average weight of the clamps, we'll just divide by two and get the average. So what do we have here? We have uh, 60, 50, 40, 40, 47, let's make it 46, about 46.7 grams, so 46.7 for the two clamps, divided by two is going to give us 23.35, let's round that off to 23.4 grams. And so we're going to write that in for the average weight of the clamps, 23.4 grams, plus or minus 0 0.1, as you can see on the data page, 23.4 plus or minus 0 0.1. Okay, I don't know whether that's going to be in focus or not, we'll find out. Step three is find the center of gravity of the meter stick by balancing it in one of the clamps. Okay, so here's the balancing clamp. We're going to put the meter stick here. We're going to slide it. How do we find the center of gravity? By seeing where the meter stick balances. Looks like right about there. Now you might think, shouldn't it balance at the 50 centimeter mark? That's right in the middle of the 100 centimeter meter stick. But actually, the meter stick is made of wood. 
and so it's imperfect. The tree that it came from may have been a little more dense on one side than the other side. So what we're going to do is look at the little measuring device here. I know you can't see it very well in, in the image, but actually, usually it's about 49 point something. Looks like about 49.8, very close to 50. <clears throat> so the center of mass is equal to 49.8 centimeters, very close to 50. So we'll record that where it says position of center of gravity on the meter stick. We're going to write 49.8 centimeters, plus or minus 0 0.5 centimeters, uh, pardon me, uh, it's asking for to the nearest 0.5 millimeters, the best we can do is about uh, plus or minus 0 0.1 centimeters, that's a little more realistic. Okay, so on your data page, you want to write position of the center of gravity of the meter stick, 49.8 plus or minus 0.1 centimeters. Procedure four says put another clamp near one end of the meter stick, one of the hanging clamps. Doesn't say where exactly, it just says near the end, it doesn't really matter where. And it says um, hang a hundred gram weight from it. Well the hanger itself is 50, so I'm adding another 50 make a total of 100 grams hanging from that. Notice it's not balanced anymore. Then it says slide the stick through the supporting clamp until the new position of balance is found. I'm going to stop it from swinging too much. Now it's pretty well balanced. So what's balancing it on the other side? There's no masses hanging from there. What's balancing it is the weight of the meter stick itself. <clears throat> now it might look a little complicated, like we've got some of the wood on this side and some of the wood on that side, but it turns out the concept of center of mass makes it very easy because we can pretend as if all the mass of the meter stick is concentrated at the center of mass. And if we hang, could hang that mass there, that's what's balancing the 100 grams on this side. So basically what we have is the meter stick <clears throat> with a 100 gram mass is balanced at some point and here's the center of mass of the meter stick that we measured we measured the the, the mass of the meter stick there is 75 75.6 grams we can we can treat that 75.6 grams as if it's hanging from the center of mass which we saw was 49.8 centimeters One thing to remember is that it's not just 100 grams hanging here, there's also the mass of the clamp, which we have to take into account. And remember that was uh, 23.4 grams. So then it says, what's the position of the 100 gram weight? So we have to measure the position of that. So we can read on our clamp right in the middle here and looking closely it looks like uh, it's less than 10 it's almost exactly 9 it looks like about 9.00 centimeters right uh, right in here maybe I can show you that a little bit better closer up We're reading along this edge here. Looks like exactly nine centimeters. So we're gonna record that on our data page where it says position of the 100 gram weight, 9.00 centimeters plus or minus 0 0.1 centimeters. So you're going to write 9.00 plus or minus 0.1 centimeters. Then it says find the position of the balancing point. We slid the meter stick through the support. So now it has 
a different balancing point. But I'm just going to read that off for you. This is 20, this is 30, so this is 24, 24, looks like about 24 point three, let's say 24.3 centimeters. And that's the position of the balancing point. So we're gonna write down on our data page, position of balancing point, 24.3 centimeters, plus or minus 0 0.1 centimeters. Like that. Okay, now once we have that data, you can see what we're going to do with that on the calculation page. It says on this page, compute the weight of the meter stick. So we're going to use the torques to compute the weight of the meter stick. We already know the true weight of the meter stick, but we're going to calculate it using torques to show that that, uh, that, that works. So on your data page, you're going to see it says, uh, it says, calculate the percent difference from the actual. So I'm going to ask you to actually use this picture on your handout to indicate with arrows where your forces are. So I can see how you did it. So it's going to look like this. We have the picture of the meter stick here. So I'm going to ask you to indicate the position of the balancing point, which is 24.3 centimeters. So you need to indicate that on this drawing and write it in 23.4 centimeters. The hanging mass we saw was at 9 centimeters, and that's going to be a force in this direction. <coughs> Uh, nine centimeters. So be sure to draw that in on your meter stick where it says nine centimeters. Now where do we draw the other force? The other force is the weight of the meter stick acting, acting at its center of mass. So that's going to be at 49.8. At 49.8 over here you want to draw an arrow indicating the mass of the meter stick. Now what we have here is an equilibrium situation. Oh, by the way, this hanging mass will be 100 plus 23.4 or 123.4 grams. That's the value of this particular force pulling counterclockwise, mass of the meter stick pulling clockwise, and the fulcrum holding it up. So this is an equilibrium situation, which means that the sum of the torques has got to equal zero. So how many torques do we have in this picture? We have two, force times distance, and force times distance. Now this is where I need you to be really clear. So uh, counterclockwise is positive, clockwise is negative. I need you to write down the torques as measured on this meter stick. So uh, the, the clockwise torque is gonna be 123, 0.4 grams. Torque is force times distance. Distance to what? Distance to the pivot point. Distance to the balancing point. So that's going to be this distance here. Well, what is that distance? It's 28. I'm doing the math for you here. I should leave this for you to figure out. But 23.4 minus 9. Okay, this is force times distance, and it's clockwise, so it's positive. The other torque is the mass of the meter stick times its distance to the pivot point. Can you see what that's going to be? It's going to be 49.8 minus 23.4. And that's a negative because it's clockwise. And this torque and that torque must add up to zero. Now the only unknown in this formula is the mass of the meter stick. So you can solve for the mass of the meter stick and then compare it using percent difference from the actual mass of the meter stick that we measured on the balance. So the percent error 
is equal to the actual minus our experimental value divided by the actual times 100%. Uh, maybe you can't see that it's too high. So percent error equals actual minus experimental divided by actual times 100%. In your uh, conclusion, you want to talk about whether that's a high number or a low number. Is it acceptable? Is it like under 10%? Uh, often we get fairly good, uh, fairly low percent errors for this lab. So that's part one, finding the mass of the meter stick using torques and comparing it with the real value. For part two, the goal of part two is just to verify that the sum of torques equals zero. We're going to do that by setting up several torques, two other torques, and seeing if they add up to zero. So following the instructions, it says put another clamp near the other end of the stick. So spend a 200 gram mass on that. Well, here's our 50. Another 50 for 100. Another 100 for 200. Don't forget the mass of the clamp. And uh, leaving it, leaving the first weight in place, find the new point of balance. See, it's not going to balance. Now we have to find the new place where it balances. I'm going to uh, raise up our lap jack here. The new place where it balances, balances in a different spot, naturally. Now the masses are swinging, could that be a source of measurement error? Okay, good. <clears throat> so, then it says, record the position of the 200 gram weight, which is really a mass. Now we didn't change the first one, so that will remain the same. Position of the 200 gram weight. I'm just gonna read that off for you. We have 80, 88, looks like 88.4. So on our data page, for the position of the 200 gram weight, I'm gonna put 88.4 plus or minus 0.1. 88.4, and the position of the new point of balance, okay? It's a little trickier to read. It's going to be 50, 58, 58.5. So the new position of balance is 58.5 centimeters, plus or minus 0 0.1. Sorry, my writing isn't too good on the paper here, but it's 58.1 centimeters. Okay, now what are we going to do with this? <clears throat> On the calculation page, the goal of this is to prove that the sum of the torques equals zero. Well, how many torques do we have in this picture? Let's take a look at it. We've got our 100 gram mass here, plus of course the clamps. <clears throat> we've got our 200 gram mass here, and we've got the new fulcrum, new balancing point. So how many torques do you see in this picture? Well, I hope you said three. Force times distance, force times distance, and the mass of the meter stick is exerting a torque about the fulcrum. Uh, that's force times distance. So what you need to do is multiply your 100 grams plus your 23 point whatever times the distance to the pivot point. The distance to the pivot point is this number minus this number. That's our L. As torque equals FL. That's our L from the fulcrum to where the 100 gram mass is hanging. That's the L that determines that torque. <clears throat> the torque exerted by the mass of the meter stick is the mass of the meter stick times its distance to the pivot point. And I need to see on your calculation page, I need to see this number minus that number. 
and then the 200 gram mass, that's clockwise, that's going to be a negative torque. It's going to be 200, so minus 200 times its distance to the pivot point. You've got three torques, a positive, a positive, and a negative. You're going to add them all up, and what should they equal? They should equal zero. Because it's an equilibrium situation, the sum of the torques equals zero. <clears throat> but they won't. They won't add up to zero because, because of measurement errors. Nothing is perfect in a lab. Now, don't be worried by this because we're dealing with big numbers here. So if you get a if you get a if you get the sum of the torques, if you add up all those torques and you get like uh, 24, you're gonna say, oh my gosh, it's not equal to zero. But wait, the torques themselves are big numbers. We have 100 grams times, I don't know, this, this could be 20, 100 grams, this is just an example here. 100 times 20 is uh, 2,000. So the actual torques themselves are in the thousands. So the sum of the torques being 24 compared to the thousands is pretty small. And that's what I need to hear you say on your lab report. I need you to say, we got some of the torques of such and such. It's not zero, but compared to the torques, it's pretty close to zero. And that's what we're trying to prove. Let me say that again. <clears throat> I need you to add up the torques, look at the number, compare that number to the torques themselves, and see that that's close to zero, which is what we're trying to prove. Any questions? Okay. The last thing we're going to do is find the sum of the torques to measure the mass of an unknown mass, an unknown object. And for the unknown object, we're going to use a lead weight. So what it says is, remove both weights in their clamps, slide the meter stick through the support, clamp so it's once again at the center of gravity. So in this procedure, we're going to put the center of gravity at the fulcrum so you won't have to worry about that one because it doesn't exert a torque about that point. Then it says, put another clamp near one end and suspend the unknown weight on that. It doesn't say where, it doesn't matter exactly where, we'll measure it. I'm putting the unknown weight on that. And then it says, put another clamp near the other end of the meter stick and hang 200 grams from it. Slide the 200 gram mass until a position of equilibrium is achieved. I'm sliding the 200 gram mass until it just balances. Stop the swinging. That looks pretty good. Then we need to find the position of the unknown mass and the new position of the 200 gram mass. The unknown mass is at uh, 9.2 centimeters. So I'm gonna write 9.20 centimeters, plus or minus 0 0.1 centimeters. And the new position of the 200 gram mass, looks like 81.5. 81.5 centimeters plus or minus 0 0.1. So then it says weigh the unknown mass on the balance for comparison. Now when you solve for the unknown mass, remember to subtract the clamp from that because that was helping to exert a torque. So we're gonna put the unknown mass on the balance see what it really is to compare with what you get. Oh, it's pretty heavy. 
move over to the 100 gram mark. 200, not 200 is too much. 100 grams, 50 is too much. 30, 130, pretty close. Let me slow this down a little bit. Looks like 134.4. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, right. 134.4. So for the mass of the unknown, we're going to write 134.4 grams plus or minus 0 0.1 grams. 134.4. 0.1 grams. So I'm going to leave it up to you. I'm not going to give you a detailed explanation of how to do that, but you could write the sum of the torques and solve for the unknown mass and then compare it with the percent error with the known value of the unknown mass. And be sure to indicate on these little meter sticks here the positions of all your torques in each case. For the analysis, Describe the purpose of each part of the procedure. The first procedure of the purpose was to find the meter stick mass using the sum of the torques equals zero. The second procedure was just to show that the sum of the torques in general equals zero. And the third procedure was to find the mass of an unknown mass. Uh, describe how you accomplish the procedure. Describe and evaluate the result. By evaluate the results, I mean you to say, my percentage error is blah, 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 and that's good or that's bad, and so forth. Make a comprehensive list of sources of measurement errors. Pretend like you were actually doing this lab. What was it about this lab that would make it difficult to write down correct numbers? I think that's pretty obvious to see uh, quite a few sources of measurement error here. And that's all there is to it. Hope you enjoy doing this lab. And we'll see you next week for the next lab for Physics 6.